disparities in the last two years. But the real thanks goes to all of you, not us. You are the true givers, and the Glenn Peter family is honored to be a small part of it. I'm Jeff Weiss for Glenn Peter Diamond Center saying thank you. Got an event? Our doors are open. Contact Paula Pirro, Charity Coordinator at Glenn Peter Diamond Center, 1544 Central Avenue. Dinner in the City is fun. Dinner in the City with panoramic views from a private rooftop is 50 times the fun. Play the new Neon Multiplier scratch-off games from the New York Lottery, and you could multiply your winnings up to 50 times. That's a chance to win up to $3 million. Make your wallet glow with new games from the New York Lottery. Available at lottery retailers near you. Must be 18 or older to purchase a lottery ticket. Please play responsibly. WTMM Mechanicville, a Town Square media station. Hi, this is Mark Kessinger from ESPN Radio. Yodelin, New York, my town. When I'm in town, I like to listen to 104.5 The Team. And now, it's time for LeVac and Gaz to answer the question, Why? Why? Tell me why. Why? <laughs> why? Hey, uh, before we get Y started, guys, there's like a quarter of a dirty, nasty, oh, purple Powerade over here. You want it? That's mine. It's been sitting in the sun. It looks all like... That's actually my drink. Are you sure? Here. Yes. Here. No, throw it out. Here. No, 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 no. I think I you actually, should drink it. In all seriousness, this is actually mine. We have been... No one really cares about how busy the radio hosts are, but we've been so busy today. I left this here like five and a half hours ago. <laughs> oh, man, it is all warm. It's, it's sitting in the sun. Gross. Uh, all right, Jordan is, got that for me too. Uh, I feel bad about it. She's, her imaginary feelings are going to be hurt. Uh, all right, here we go. It's the time to play the game called the Why. Guys ask us questions. We try to figure them out. Your answer cannot simply be why not or because. You actually have to reason out the nonsense that is going on in the world. Let's get it on. The New York Giants struggled on offense in Week One. Why? Uh, you know what? I I've, I've been thinking a lot about this. Some people are going to say the offensive line sucks. Some people are going to say that Eli Manning is deteriorating. I say no. I say Ben McAdoo has abandoned the run entirely too much and too early. Throwing the ball is fun. It's cute. It'll win you some games in Green Bay with Aaron Rodgers, and you might dominate a season of Madden. But if you want to win in the NFL, you got to run the football, especially when your best offensive weapon, Odell Beckham Jr., is not in the game. Run the rock, yo. That's the problem. That's a good answer. I'm just going to go another way with it. How much better did the offense get? I mean, this is an offense that wasn't great last season. They added Brandon Marshall, and Brandon Marshall's been really good in his career. Touchdown machine in the red zone. But he's never played as a teammate with Peyton Manning before. Maybe they didn't have enough chemistry going forward. Maybe early on in the season, they're just not ready to go with one another. It wasn't the right upgrade, it seems, right now. And it kind of, it's going to be a question I think we're going to ask throughout the entire season. How, instead of why, is it going to get better? We might find out on Monday night against the Detroit Lions if there's going to be any moves <laughs> scheme-wise, mindset-wise, percentage of run versus pass, Adrian Peterson. There's a lot of things. People on our Facebook today think Deion Lewis would be the answer because there's been rumors that the Patriots are taking calls on Deion Lewis. We both like Deion Lewis. I don't know if he's a quick fix for the Giants either. You can have a backfield of Walter Payton, Gale Sayers, Jim Brown, uh, Adrian Peterson, and Eric Dickerson. If you're not handing them the football, Mac can do it. Don't make a damn big difference. The Buffalo Bills are only a touchdown underdog against the Carolina Panthers. Why? Because the Panthers ain't shown us much yet. I mean, the running back depth is non-existent. Cam Newton still looks a little, uh, little rusty. And the Buffalo Bills, if they're going to do one thing, they're going to play solid football. They're going to play fundamental football. And uh, what's that guy's name? He used to be a coach over uh, in Carolina. Sean now McDermott. he's a head coach over in uh -huh. Buffalo. Oh, that guy. See, I went on this whole belief, and I still stick by, and I think the answer is that it probably actually should be less, if anything, than a touchdown because of what you just hinted at there, the Sean McDermott connection, plus Brandon Bean. Remember this, like I had to deal with this this past weekend. Scott Schaefer is the defensive coordinator for the Middle Tennessee State Blue Raiders. He recruited all the players for Syracuse University, and he goes up against them, and he helps them pull off the upset Middle Tennessee State because he knows the guys. Brandon Bean was the GM in waiting in Carolina. The reason he took the job in Buffalo is he thought Dave Gettleman would never get fired or never leave. 
sure enough, he gets fired in July. But Bean knows the whole system. Now, he's not coaching and he's not playing against the team, but I think you got to at least factor that in, that he's getting in Sean McDermott's ear. Hey, remember when Cam Newton does this? Hey, remember when Jonathan Stewart does that? Remember how you could beat Luke Keekley? Those things, I know it's Joe's, Jim's and Joe's got to make the plays at the end, but I think that's a big factor for the Bills this weekend. You know, I know that you played uh, college football. You broke out the Jim's and Joe's line that coaches like to. <laughs> that's a classic one we hear all the time. Yeah. Our role this Chapman struggled today. Why? Uh, Is struggled even the right word? Did I, did I, I don't know, man. Well, all right. He gave up one run. He had two to play with. He put he put two on. He, he, they they asked him to get four outs instead of three. There's a lot. There's a lot of reasons I could make a lot of. You know what? I, I said reasons. I misspoke. I can make up a lot of excuses for Raldis Chapman. I just I wonder if he's got uh, what's it? Tired arm, sore arm, whatever you want to call it. Maybe he needs to soak it in a bucket of Bengay and hope. I don't know, but he just doesn't seem to be him. I I've never seen a, an athlete get paid all kinds of money and then not perform at a high level after oh wait yes i've seen it many times you know if you don't know, look at our role this chapman and just like listen to the game you don't know who's pitching and you just heard okay foul ball foul ball out of play the hitters did a great job yeah and you kind of look at the at-bats that chapman had and you kind of shrug your shoulders and think man i mean that's a really good hit that's a really good drive hit right there that's another good single and you're thinking Oh, it's a roll of shift. Oh, he blew it. He stinks. He's, oh, I mean, Dylan Batantis or Tommy Canely, somebody else. Those were just good jobs by the Rays. I, I get it's Chapman, though. I can't, like, yeah. change what happened. He struggled because the batters just were better than the at-bats. It's a stupid answer, but it's the truth of it. Guys, is it as simple as, you know, and you know I always say this. I have less faith in an ace who goes National League to American League than American League to National League because you're facing more batters, no, no pitchers using a DH, um, and, and there just seems to be a better offensive system in the American League. I, is this something where, you know, Cincinnati, short stint New York, then Chicago, now he's a bona fide American League reliever, been there all season long. People are just getting, like, the, the book's out. Foul him off till he gets frustrated, and then he'll give you something to hit. That's not a bad theory. The only reason I almost pause on that is because he was hit around in the playoffs when he was with Chicago, but... The best teams in Major League Baseball in the well, playoffs. And Cleveland was, was right. the team that bat him around. It's one of the best. So let's get back to this Adrian Peterson situation. The Adrian Peterson situation in New Orleans. They're not giving him the football enough. And he signed with the Saints. Two part on that one. Why and why? I got to believe that he looked at that schedule and thought, I'm going to open the season in Minnesota. I'm going to go against my Vikings. They're going to have their fresh new toys at running back. And I'm going to outshine them with this this big, fast Saints offense. And it's going to be amazing. I can't wait. And then got there and realized, oh, Mark Ingram's a thing. Oh, this guy's a thing. Oh, Drew Brees throws the ball 45 times a game. I've never had that at quarterback before. And I just think, I, I honestly think it's a bad fit. I think everybody thought, you know the way the Raiders used Lynch on Sunday where it was like, okay, we're up. Now let's just hammer the ball and, get, and run the clock. Yeah. I think that's what the Saints saw. They may even have said it to him. Hey, this is what we're going to do with you? And then he got there, and they're like, well, now that you're here, you're going to do what we said. <laughs> right. I see what you're saying there, and I wonder if it's how much Sean Payton had to do with this decision. Because when you look at it like from a college mindset, if you told me you could sign this really good running back, but he's going to be your third stringer, the mindset is that, well, that's great. He's not playing for Alabama or Florida State, and he's on our roster. We'd love to have him. And if you're Sean Payton, you think, okay, who's my best third string running back option? Adrian Peterson or some random guy off the scout team? Of course, it's Adrian Peterson. It's almost too much at one position. It's a great idea. It's really cool to have all these good guys and on the offensive skill, but there's only one football. You don't have to have two guys running the ball at the same time. I can't imagine that Adrian Peterson is going to be happy if this is the way it goes, finishing the season in New Orleans. And if you're anybody else across the NFL, why not pick up the phone and call somebody? Why not see if somebody wants to do it? Speaking of picking up the phone, Ken and Latham, what's going on, my brother? Hey, guys, I, I wanted to see what you thought about this. I don't want to throw uh, water on uh, a win, but I thought of this 10 days ago. I didn't get a chance to say it, and he went and he did it again today. Girardi, who I don't think anybody's going to argue is a micromanager, 
And I'm not one of these hate Girardi guys on Twitter. I know you get into it with a couple of guys. That's uh, not me. Get into it. <laughs> I get, I get but, followed by them. But, but, but 10 days ago, he stole the win from Montgomery. I listened to the game. Montgomery was actually hitting his stride. He had retired the last five guys. He gives up a clean single up the middle. Here comes Joe. So Montgomery doesn't get the win. And he does, in my view, he did it again today. Garcia was pitching okay. He gives up a bloop single, and that's how Sterling uh, described it. Bloop single with two outs to do to, and he takes Garcia out. And you could make the argument, now, Ken, that he did the same thing against CC, and he put in Robertson too early to game earlier this week. Now, now you can tell me you're independent. Yeah, but okay, God, but he didn't do it with Tanaka in Texas. Right. He watched Tanaka get killed in Texas in the fifth inning. Now, Tanaka's the big money guy. Tanaka's the guy. But you don't care about taking a win away from uh, Montgomery or Garcia. And I, and I think that says something about you. I think that says you're not a player's coach. And uh, I know it's only a couple of games, but it really irritates me. It well, really does. I wanted to see what Ken, you thought about it. Ken, let me ask you this, though. Like, like, if you're Girardi, you've won a lot of games with Tanaka. You have not won a lot of games with Montgomery or Jaime Garcia. I, I think it's just a situation where he, he, even though Tanaka hasn't been great, he's got faith in him, and he knows that if he can build him back up to what he was, he could go into next season with three aces. All right, well, forget about Tanaka. You, you don't think these two newer guys, especially a guy like Montgomery, who you should be grooming for the future, I think they deserved the shot, especially the Montgomery game. Cause like I said, he retired the last five guys was looking great. You had a two-run lead. You knew you were going to score more runs on God's uh, pitching staff. You didn't have to take out Montgomery 10 days ago. Uh, but he looks frazzled, too, though. I mean, this, it's look, you're right and until you're wrong. You know what I mean? Like, if he, he leaves him in and the, and the kid gives up, you know, gets gets worked and they can't get out of the hole, then he's an idiot. And now he's, you know, especially coming off this one, he got the win. I try not to look too deep because I'm not the kind of guy who's going to be able to make that decision. Well, I mean, okay, love this guy. All right, thanks, Ken. We're sorry to lose Ken there at the end, but uh, the reason I brought up the CC thing is that, and then Andrew Marchand wrote about this, the thing Ken's talking about, that it's been a constant thing over the week. Yeah. And I get it. There's times you want to give the guy the victory and things like that, but it hasn't blown a game yet. You hit it at this at your last right. statement. Like, it's right until you're wrong, and you're wrong until you're right. I don't want to go this far. But Girardi's not thinking about saving the innings and arms until the postseason, is he? Because that's, that's it's it's in, in all honesty. I mean, if we boil it right down to what it is, it's either that or if you had that bullpen to play with, how fast would you go to it? You got the best bullpen in yeah. baseball, in my opinion. And, and you they, do not have the best starting pitcher. He touched on. I don't know if Ken heard this or you got a chance to hear this in one of the pregames earlier this week. Girardi was with Susan Waldman, and they, she asked him about David Robertson. And he said Robertson's one of the few guys over the past few years, and not just for the Yankees, but for Major League Baseball, that's been able to go in and rain him innings. He hasn't been an eighth inning or ninth inning guy. He could go any inning you wanted. And Girardi said, look, I, I don't know why it doesn't work that other guys can't do this, right. but it's always worked for Robertson. I got two more whys if you want them. Yeah, let's do it. The Cleveland Indians have won 21 games in a row. Why and it, how and what? They're the best team in baseball, man. They, will that the, the the question for me is will they be able to translate that into a World Series? Because look, twenty one regular season games that's great. Now you got to go out. You got to take three of five, probably from the Yankees. Then you got to take four of seven Astros or Red Sox. Then you take four of seven, probably the Nationals or the Dodgers. <sighs> that's a lot different than winning twenty one, just random American League games. This is awesome, though. It is. Pretty it's, cool. it's pretty cool that we're seeing a team that was one run away from winning the World Series last season in a city that a year ago got the Cavaliers to win and almost was called Loserville. Like, we have that drop on there that finally they got over the top with the Cavs. And now the Indians could do it this season. Our guys like Alex Hooper and Justin Lana, they got to be thrilled that their team's doing this. I got one more for you. Okay. You loved the movie It. Yes. Why? Uh, kids were great. Kids are amazing actors. The uh, the one thing I heard was some people didn't didn't like how much Pennywise, the the dancing clown was in it. He's terrifying. He's he is uh, what's his name? Bill Skarsgård. He's got some brothers and like relatives yeah, that are actors yeah. too. Yeah. He, it's not the clown mask, 
so much, which, I mean, that is terrifying.